You guys know how much of a soft spot I have for river and lake monsters. There is just something about the idea that some kind of cryptic creature could be hidden just below the water's surface. That, to me, makes them a little more plausible. While I was researching the subject, I stumbled upon an animal from over 300 million years ago that had a strange body shape, a body that reminded me of a famous cryptid that was known as Trunco. In turn, Trunco being similar to an animal that is found in Hindu mythology. So let's take a look. Welcome to IF, videos on history and mystery. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss a video again. So let's begin by telling the story of Trunco, going back to the year 1924 in the month of October. An article popped up in the Daily Mail, an English newspaper. This article detailed the sighting of a fish-like polar bear which was seen fighting a pair of killer whales. Those that spotted the strange creature said that the three animals fought for over three hours. During the pitch battle, it was reported that Trunco could raise up out of the water to a height of 20 feet. The witnesses said that the mystery creature used a long appendage to fight the whales. They speculated that it could be a tail, but as the name of the creature indicates, others think that it was a trunk. Whatever the beast was, and whatever it used to fight the sea mammals, it lost and the body washed ashore nearly a fortnight later. This would become a wasted opportunity as the carcass was not examined by scientists, but cryptozoologist Carl Schucker did get to see the remains which he went on to describe as follows. The carcass had a covering of white fur said to be eight inches long, the aforementioned trunk along with a lobster-like tail measuring 10 feet. The dimensions of the beast were 47 feet in length, just over 10 feet wide, and a height of 5 foot. The distinctive trunk was attached to a body with no discernible head. This unusual animal is unlike any animal that is known to science of the time, but was a lot like a Hindu mythological creature. Some cryptozoologists suspect the legend of the Makara may be based in fact and they associate it with Trunco, the mysterious beast that was sighted off of South Africa's Indian Ocean coast. This animal known as the Makara is often featured in Hindu paintings and is used as a vehicle or Vahana and is ridden by the Ganja, the river goddess of the Ganges and even a sea deity named Namada. This creature is depicted in Hindu and Buddhist iconography as a water-dwelling beast that looks like an aquatic elephant. Could this be Trunco or maybe a similar species minus the fur due to it being native to a warmer climate? Or maybe it is something else. There is an animal from prehistory that closely matches the description but is much, much smaller. It does, however, have the characteristic appearance of Trunco and the Makara. This is a creature from 307 million years ago discovered fossilized in a rock at an Illinois coal mining pit in 1958. Named Tully Monstrum, Gregarium, or as it's more commonly become known as, the Tully Monster. This creature is thought to have been some sort of free-swimming sea slug. It is one of the strangest animals to have ever shown up in the fossil record. It had a torpedo-shaped body and like Trunco, a long-jointed snout which looked like an elephant's trunk and was finished with a claw that was edged with sharp teeth. It had bizarre eyes that were located at the end of stick-like structures that grew from the sides of the body. If we compare the Tully monster to the carcass of Trunco, we have something that looks fairly alike. We could assume that if Trunco had eyes like the Tully monster, they would be quick to rot away when the animal died. Eyes often being the first body part to be scavenged. Both animals had the distinctive trunk and with the Tully monster, we can clearly tell that it was used in the same fashion as an elephant, used like an arm. An arm that would be used to defend itself, say if it was being attacked. This is what was reported by the witnesses of Trunco's battle with the orcas. We don't, however, find a lobster-like tail on the Tully monster so that may be a feature that is unique to Trunco. Also, the Tully monster only measured around 14 inches in length, much smaller than Trunco, 
but could the former be a similar giant variant of the species? Proving such a creature could have its difficulties. The finding of fossils of soft body creatures and even cartilaged animals like sharks is difficult. It is a shame that no one had the foresight to collect samples from the corpse of Trunco. If they had, we may have some answers today. The story of the Tully monster also takes a strange turn at this point. Scientists have not been able to agree on the classification of the animal. They have been going back and forth on whether it was a vertebrate or an invertebrate. Arguments have raged for decades since the fossil was first found in the 50s. Evidence swinging between the two camps. In 2016, researchers argued that the animal should be grouped with vertebrates because its eyes contained pigment granules called melanomasomes. These were arranged by shape and size in the same way as those invertebrate eyes. However, eyes of some invertebrates, such as octopus and squid, also contain melanosomes, partitioned by shape and size in a similar way to Tully's eyes and these can also be preserved in fossils. In the latest round of tests, to prove who is correct, researchers used a particle accelerator to look into the chemical makeup of the fossil and then compare it to animals living today. These scientists explained that the melanomasomes from the eyes of modern vertebrates have a higher ratio of zinc to copper than the modern invertebrates, and to their surprise, they found the same pattern could be seen in fossilized vertebrates and invertebrates. They then analyzed the chemistry of Tully's eyes, and the ratio of zinc to copper was more similar to that of invertebrates than vertebrates. This suggests that the animal may not have been a vertebrate, contradicting previous efforts to classify it. Tully's eyes contained a different type of copper to that found in vertebrate eyes but the copper also wasn't identical to that in invertebrates that were studied. So while this work adds weight to the idea that Tully is not a vertebrate, it doesn't clearly identify it as an invertebrate either. This creature does not fit with what is known, and although it may not be of the same massive proportions of Trunco, it does carry with it the idea that there are animals out there that once existed, or possibly still do exist, that do not fit with current scientific theory. These are the animals that we cryptid fans point to as an explanation to the stories and sightings from all over the planet of strange, sometimes mythical mystery beasts. I am reminded of Shakespeare's Hamlet, in which the lead character suggests that human knowledge is limited, saying, There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, they're not dreamt of in your philosophy. So what do you think? What was Trunko? Was he a creature found in Hindu mythology? Or could it have been a giant Tully monster? Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, if you like what I do here on the channel, hit that red button, like and share. You can catch the latest by searching We Are If. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.